Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Otro went to the jazz room and got herself a glass of wine just as Nate entered. When Nate asked Audra where Tucker was, she said that he was around. Nate expressed his suspicion that Audra had ejected Tucker, to which Audra responded that she and Tucker were simply independent people. Nate expressed his lack of friendship with Audra. If that's the case, Audra added, Nate ought to quit bugging her about Tucker. Tucker was a ruthless Savoy who only thought about himself, Nate said. Tucker had lately converted the jazz lounge into a Parisian café, where he had proposed to Audra. Audra informed Nate. Nate questioned Audra about her lack of concern for Tucker's behavior. Tucker, according to Nate, was merely attempting to recreate a better version of his failed Paris honeymoon with Ashley. Nate expressed his surprise that Audra was unable to recognize that. Reminding Nate of her own history with Tucker in Paris, Audra said, Nate inquired as to Audra's acceptance of Tucker's offer. Nate expressed his wish that Audra wasn't foolish enough to say yes. Why did Nate worry about Audra's connection with Tucker? Audra questioned. Nate might have a secret infatuation with Audra, Audra speculated. In a hypothetical question, Nate asked Audra if it would bother her if he really did have hidden agendas. If Nate was into her, Audra declared that she would be flattered. Nate told Audra that the conversation was hypothetical and charged her with fishing for compliments. Nate claimed he wouldn't be so subtle about it if he was interested in Audra. As her buddy, Nate explained that he had been attempting to find a method to get Audra away from Tucker. If it made Nate feel any better, Audra replied she was appreciative of his protective behavior toward her and had declined the proposal. Marriage, according to Audra, is a archaic institution. Nate stated that rather than being married, Audra's problem was with Tucker. Nate asserted that Audra deserved more and that she should take the blinders off. Nate headed out to Chancellor Winters for the meeting. Alan called Ashley at the athletic club to let her know he was heading out of town and to arrange a meeting. Ashley angrily retorted that Alan merely wanted to psychoanalyze her once more clearly under the sway of Miss Abbott. Alan refuted the charge. Ashley felt Belle take over her personality as Alan spoke, and her head began to ring. Ashley boldly declared that she would meet Alan at the hotel and that she would love to see him. Abby questioned Devon at Crimson Lights about Mamie's emergency meeting at Chancellor Winters. Devon was unaware of the reason behind calling the meeting, but Billy had not received an invitation, Tucker stepped forward, and Abby scowled at him. Devon chastised her for being impolite. Devon was aware of what was going to happen, even though Abby apologized. Tucker, according to Abby, would just attempt to butter them up. Tucker said he had a favor to ask and that had been his goal. Tucker mentioned that he continued to receive emails from Dominic's music class and that he was aware of the impending performance. Tucker would not be a good idea to go, according to Devon, since he might cause a scene. Since Devon had requested that Tucker keep his distance, Devon claimed that nothing had changed. As Devon and Abby started to leave, Tucker inquired about Ashley's level of comfort. What had transpired between Ashley and Tucker, according to Abby, was ancient history. Has Abby seen her mother in person recently? Tucker inquired. With visible annoyance, Abby questioned why Tucker was worried about Ashley. Abby was informed by Tucker that Ashley needed to be checked on a little more regularly. Ashley was overjoyed to see Alan when she got to the restaurant. Ashley said that her family had been picking on her and apologized for being unpleasant to Alan in the past. Alan mentioned that Ashley had instructed him to leave her alone and head to Vienna the last time he had seen her. Ashley dismissed it, claiming to have been living with horrible siblings. Ashley remarked that Alan was the one person she could trust while twirling her hair. Tucker entered the room and gave Ashley a troubled look. Tucker walked up to Alan and Ashley and said hello. 
Tucker argued that Alan needed to know who Tucker was back then as he had been friends with Ashley for years. Alan said that he was aware of Tucker. Rubbing Alan's shoulder, Ashley informed Tucker that Alan was smart and was just trying to be modest. Ashley claimed that Alan was the one who had shown her, but her argument with Tucker in Paris had been unfounded. Tucker commented that Alan chose the perfect time to see Ashley. Tucker should move on, Ashley said. When Audra entered the restaurant, she noticed the people gathered at the bar. Ashley remarked how excellent Audra's timing was. Closer eye is what Ashley wanted Audra to do with Tucker. Audra shook hands with Alan. After noting that Ashley seemed to be in good hands, Audra and Tucker departed. Alan was informed by Ashley that Audra was so pretty and way too smart to be with somebody as horrible as Tucker. Inquiring about Tucker's subtextual comments on Ashley's mental state and his moving on with Audra, Alan questioned Ashley about her feelings. Shaking her head, Ashley inquired if she ought to pull up a couch. With regret, Alan mentioned the occupational hazard. Tucker was with the correct person, according to Ashley. Ashley smiled and touched Alan's arm to confirm that she was. Ashley inquired as to Alan's ability to stay in Genoa City longer. In order to spend more time with Ashley, Alan mentioned that he may have someone cover for him at the conference. Lily questioned Manny at Chancellor Winters about her early arrival at the conference. Manny mentioned that their previous encounter had been heated, and she wanted to talk to Lily about it. Lily inquired as to the topic of the meeting. Despite her desire to hold off until the others arrived, Manny stated it would be worth it. Lily expressed her want to avoid surprises like last time. Manny assured me there would be none. Manny was greeted by Devon, Abby, and Nate as they entered the office. Billy should attend the meeting as well, according to Lily, as he serves on the board. According to Manny, Abby, and family only were invited to the conference. Billy was also a member of Abby's family, Abby informed Manny. A few major choices had to be made, according to Mamie, because the Winters family was really dysfunctional. Lily was settling down at work, so Mamie decided it was time for the family to reassess things. Billy and Jill, according to Mamie, had been turning the Winters family against one another, and Mamie was coming to make things right. Mamie was exaggerating, according to Nate. Contrary to what Mamie thought, Mamie inquired about Nate, being denied a seat on the board at Chancellor Winters. When Lily said it was too soon, Mamie said Lily was punishing Nate. Nate admitted to Mamie that although he had initially been angry about losing out on the board post, he had discussed it with Lily and understood her perspective. Nate acknowledged that he had betrayed the business and the family, and that Devon and Lily's forgiveness was the only reason he continued to be involved in Chancellor Winters. Nate claimed that Mamie's hatred of Jill was the source of any tension that existed. Although Mamie claimed not to despise Jill, she did assert that Chancellor Winters should once again be run as the family business it was intended to be. Devon informed Mamie that the union involved more than just the Winters family, since Jill had included Chancellor. To accomplish what she wanted, Mamie was accused by Nate of creating a war— Mamie became combative. Lily concurred that Mamie was attempting to instigate a conflict and charged Mamie with being indifferent to the possibility of the entire corporation collapsing on them. Lily claimed that if Mamie hadn't created so much dissension, Jill wouldn't have brought Billy back to the organization. Mamie, Lily claimed, was destroying what Lily had built up. The key, according to Mamie, was that Lily, not Jill, had completed the task for the corporation. Jill owned half of the business, according to Lily. Refusing to back down, Mamie pushed that the family get together to get rid of Jill and Billy. Mamie was the problem, according to Devon, and she was only looking for difficulties. The way her family was treating her, according to Mamie, heartbroken her. Mamie was reassured by Devon, Lily, and Nate that they loved her. Many wanted to take a swing at Billy and Jill, but Devon warned there was too much at stake for them to let her. Lily, Devon, and Nate, according to an enraged Mamie, were overly entitled 
underexperienced, one of adults who was scared to take a leap of faith. Everyone needed to calm down, according to Lily. Mamie claimed it was obvious she wasn't welcome at the business. Mamie reminded Nate that if Mamie hadn't intervened, he wouldn't even be employed by the company. Mamie became even more enraged and declared, This is betrayal, and I will never forget it. Mamie mentioned that she also owned stock in the business. They would be seeing more of her, she said before storming off. I think we just made another enemy, stated Nate. Autor asked Tucker, in an upper suite, what he thought about Alan. Alan had not left much of an impact, according to Tucker. Audra expressed her frustration at always running into Ashley and her many moods. When Tucker mentioned Ashley's illness, Audra questioned why no one had taken action. Tucker concurred, adding that Abby was unaware of Ashley's problems. Tucker was informed by Audra that Ashley had appeared chipper during their conversation. Tucker claimed to have been concentrating on Alan. Audra added that Ashley had appeared as though she would devour the poor guy and that Ashley had demanded more from Alan than just counselling. Audra expressed her excitement at not having to hear Ashley's name ever again. Remorseful, Tucker stated that although he didn't want to be with Ashley, he still had feelings for her. Tucker expressed his hope that Alan would be there for Ashley, saying the Abbots were obviously in denial about her health. Rather of talking about Ashley, Tucker claimed he would rather focus about Audra. Tucker said that he and Audra could proceed with their vacation to Paris, and that things were back on track with Glissade. Tucker questioned why Audra wasn't happier as it didn't seem like she was very excited. Audra expressed her desire to see more than just Paris, and offered some recommendations for additional destinations. Tucker stated Audra could choose where they would go on their plan. According to Tucker, his goal was to fulfill every desire Audra held. Audra declared that the trip would be so good for them as they started to undress. Audra broke up their kiss to clarify that she was not under any pressure to accept Tucker's marriage proposal. Tucker expressed his hope that Europe would make her reconsider. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.